Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Jackie Ives, your host for the Video Summit series, Make Him Fall Madly in Love. 21 experts share keys and tools to help you discover how to attract love, keep it real, and make it last forever. And today we have a very special guest speaker today, and that's Whitney Freya. Whitney, welcome to our Video Summit series. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jackie. I'm excited. Great. And you have some really special things to share with our audience. And before we get started, I just wanted to tell everyone a little bit more about you. And so you are a you are a motivational speaker. You're a post, you work in personal growth and a spiritual teacher. And I know that you're using your creative art form uh, to to teach others to get uh, more into their source energy and tap into that. And I know you're going to share that with us. And um, so you also are a mother uh, of three and an author of two published books on creativity and personal growth. And so I'm thrilled to talk to you about radical self-love and why it's the secret. And so thank you so much for being here. And let's jump right into that topic of self-love. Well, I don't know about you all, but this is coming up over and over and over again. And it's so important because we really, truly cannot um, love someone else and receive other people's love unless we are loving ourselves. And inherent in this um, call to love yourself is the fact that we've had this underlying you know, wave of energy, um, subtle, maybe not so subtle in some cases, that has told us that loving ourself is being selfish. You know? and, and I mean, I know it's been even the last you know, five, ten years where I would talk to people about how just when you know, sitting down and doing nothing, you start feeling guilty. Okay, wait, what, what should I be doing? You know, what am I missing out on? And so the whole idea of self-care and loving yourself and making decisions from a place that is loving to you rather than putting everybody else first is really what the key is, the secret to being able to vibrate at the level of that divine love that you want to attract in relationships. I think that's another thing right now in relationships is that we have high expectations, right, for this love. Like we want the soulmate, we want the partner that's going to, you know, amplify our truest, most authentic selves and not feel threatened by it because they don't love themselves. So, um, so I mean, you just imagine, and I've told my kids this. I said, imagine if everybody in the world loved themselves. Like there could be war or abuse or you know any of these things that are going on. It, it really couldn't exist. So the first and foremost, I think, call to action is to, and how great is this, is to be loving and kind to ourselves first. Um, so that then we can attract that, that high vibration love that we all want. We don't want the low vibration love that's going to you know, die out or it's going to make us compromise or you know, um, stray from our truest path to keep everybody else comfortable. You know, we really, I think right now, we want that divine love. It's very high vibration, and if you're not loving yourself, you're just not going to be at that vibration. <clears throat> so, I just couldn't agree with you more on everything you just said about self-love. And so, what are the steps that people can do to, uh, people say, I love myself, but then their actions may indicate, and you may see, because you've come into all this self-love, that they're not really, they don't really understand what truly, what self-love truly is. What are the steps that you take and that you would recommend to the audience that they can begin to start loving themselves more now? Well, you know, at the basis of all this, and, and this is what I talk about on, on so many different levels to so many different audiences, is it's about changing the way we think, right? Changing the pictures that we paint in our mind. And the way our minds work neurologically is the repetitive thoughts create those neural pathways, you know, and those repetitive thoughts go from, you know, two-lane dirt roads to eight-lane superhighways where we become so accustomed to, um, you know, kind of knocking ourselves down or playing small or uh, minimizing. You know, the classic is when you walk into a group of girlfriends, say, you know, you're meeting out and you walk in and someone gives you a compliment and you immediately put yourself down like oh no you know it's no big deal or 
did you see when I screwed up there, you know? And and so it's a very subtle thing that we do sometimes in not loving ourselves. And so likewise, those neural pathways can be broken when we stop saying those little, you know, jabs and putting ourselves down and we can create new ones. And so what I have been doing, you know, for the last 17 years is giving people an opportunity to experience these lessons and spiritual truths in front of the canvas. And in the process of painting, if you're too critical of yourself, it will come up. You know, if you have a hard time taking praise and compliments, that will come up. And instead of dealing with it on the big scale, you know, getting Freudian about it or anything like that, we simply learn how to be kind and loving to ourselves as we paint, as we create. And so most people, when I start with them, they're in front of the canvas and they're like, oh, see, it's not working. You know, I can't do this. My, my sister inherited all the creative genes. You know, I'm not good at this. It's never going to work. You know, all these different things. I don't have time. I don't have space. That's not loving yourself. So in the process of that, we're able to experience and I kind of highlight, all right, so when you say it's not working, I'm not good at this, you've just done the equivalent of put up a brick wall, an energetic brick wall in front of what you desire. So then instead of saying everything that's not working, it's what do you want? Well, I want, you know, I want my goddess, I want the lotus to, to not look like a, you know, a tuffet that you know, whatever, like a mushroom. I want it to look like a lotus flower. Okay, well, let's make it look like a lotus flower. What about it doesn't look like a lotus flower? Well, this, this, and that, right? So then we've just energetically just blasted through that brick wall, and guess who's creating the change? They are. They're the creators. They're creating their reality, right? And so when you do that in front of the canvas, physiologically, you're creating new neural pathways that say, um, I am good at this. I can create the change I want. I love this. And then, just like um, you know, the superhighway, doesn't matter what cars are driving down it, the next time you're in a situation, you start to be critical of yourself, and then you remember, ooh, I have this other route I can take. And I can you know, focus on what do I want, or what's good about this, what's working, so that I stay in that creative flow. So it's kind of like you just picture... Um, a river, you know, that's just flowing freely and rushing and, you know, I can get into this because I've got rivers all around me that are bulging right now. Or picture like a damned, polluted river, right? And if we're going to find the divine love that we're meant to find and experience in this lifetime, we cannot be a polluted, damned river. We've got to be completely free-flowing and that's embracing you know, the, the mistakes, you know, and the different layers of our life that maybe aren't working the way we want. And instead of criticizing ourselves and putting ourselves down and keeping us ourselves small, we tap into that creative energy, which is all about what else is possible. And when we do that, we just emanate that potential and the creative energy that is I create my reality. And when you're in that space, if you want a divinely loving, you know, spirited, soulful, lusty, sexy relationship, you are creating that because you have taken responsibility for the role you play in creating your life. If you're over there playing the victim all the time in these little ways that we do, I mean, you know, you're just not, you're not going to be, you know, putting out the magnetism that you need to attract what you want. I absolutely love um, how you're tying in your art. You're obviously an accomplished artist, and you're tying this into self-love. And, and just when you were talking, I was just thinking, imagining how, how much self-worth I would have after I began to get into this, um, this work. And, and so tell me, do you work with groups in this, or is this a one-on-one? -on -one? And what was the inspiration behind um, bringing your art form into the subconscious and raising that vibration? Well, so I I work with um, I travel, you know, almost monthly. I'm I'm going to Hawaii um, next week, and <laughs> I teach workshops and retreats, you know, live in um, as beautiful, lovely places as I can. And then I have um, online programs 
that um, people can do kind of independent study or with a coach, with myself or one of my creatively fit coaches. I have a whole online community on my website where the online programs are stored and then where we can all interact. And then I do work one-on-one -on -one, um, with only five people at a time. And, um, and that's a, a six-month uh, relationship and uh, personal retreats. And it's really about allowing me to, to bring to the surface your muse, your artist within. And, and really getting to the core of your authentic self, which ultimately is a creator. And if we're not feeling authentic or joyful, it's because we're not centered and aligned with our intention for this lifetime. So it's your creator energy that's going to get you aligned with the change you came here to create, what you came here to create. And, and I, what I love about this is you read about it, you know, um, Law of Attraction, Abraham Hicks. I just am reading that book for the first time this year. And just over and over and over and over. It's like you are here to create. You're here as a creator. So, um, so I absolutely love working with people, and um, and the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really powerful. And the and the the truth is that um, I got inspired intuitively to create an environment where people could come and make art, so that they could go out into the art that is their life and create the change they want. Back in '94 with no art background, no art experience. I had grown up a wannabe artist, and about 16 months later, I opened my first art center in Nashville, Tennessee, in May of 96. And I opened that, still not having taken an art class or a painting class, um, but it was called the Creative Fitness Center, and, and I promoted it as a right brain gym. And, uh, and since then, I've learned along with my clients, and I have gone on the journey that is the creative journey myself. And you know the first level is learning how to create the way you want to create and accept that you have an artist within. You know, so there's like just the logistics of, of getting you know your art journal out and painting on the canvas and realizing, oh, I can do this. And then the next layer is realizing that this creativity is much bigger than learning how to paint pretty pictures. You know, that it's really about accessing that energy of of creator. It's the I am presence. It's the I am whatever I declare and feel that I am. And then of course there is a spiritual journey along with that. It, it just it has to happen. And um, up until 2010 I was you know led and guided and very comfortable with what I was told to just get people into their right brain and that they would take it from there. And so I'm like, okay, I can do that, no problem. And then in 2010, I started getting the messages of, now you need to share with people that this is really a spiritual journey. And I can't tell you what an amazing experience it was to watch me get so afraid to do that, you know, to put it on the home page, to um, talk to people about having a spiritual journey along with what I was sharing with people. And then also knowing that that's what I wanted, that that's, for me, that was the whole reason to paint was to connect to that um, that you know that source, that higher self perspective. So um, in 2012, 2011, 2012 is where I really dove in, and of course my website right now. I mean, I've named myself after a Norse goddess, and my whole website is all about you know creativity and spirituality. So um, so the the intention to empower people and inspire people's lives and show them that they can live as artists came before my ability to paint. And then I learned along with them. And so I kind of joke with people that I'm a professional beginner, you know, because I, I don't, you know, you ask about buying this painting, right? And I do sell work. I love to sell work. And, and that's something I, I can expand upon moving forward. But but my first love is I want to teach, like I'd rather teach you how to paint your flower and goddess painting, you know, so that you've got that experience of like, look what I created. And I mean, the ripple effects are just infinite when you tap into that. Infinite. Well, you clearly have a very special, unique gift, and I'm just so grateful that you're offering that up and that you have, through your own work on yourself, just brought out this this unique 
ability to channel all that creativity through your spirituality and, and come into all the self-love. And so you have that piece of art behind you, and I'm dying to ask you about it. Is it symbolic? Was there anything about it that you can tell us um, the process you went through and any symbolism with the attraction of love? And yes. So, so the after you know, I talked about kind of the layer of the spiritual journey that comes with this. So then, my latest um, revelations have been all around the language of symbols and sacred symbols in particular. And when I know for sure, because I, I mean, I've had so many conversations with people and all different areas that are also getting the same message is that symbols are a way of communicating directly with our higher consciousness, with God, with our highest self, whatever that is for you, the big you, you know, the infinite you. And you think about it, the logical mind, the left brain is using um, words and numbers and you know that's your spreadsheets and the learned language, anything that we learn and then store away, that's left brain, logical, linear, conscious mind, what Carl Jung referred to as the conscious mind. And then symbols and imagery and imagination are the bridges to the unconscious mind or the infinite or your intuitive self or God or Christ consciousness or you know anything that you read about that's telling you that you have access to this infinite field of wisdom and potential. So symbols are the way you communicate with that 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 presence, that light, that awareness. And so when you create symbols and when you engage with these sacred symbols, you're literally changing the energy and aligning with their, um, with their vibration and also communicating directly. It's like sending an email, I want this. Um, you know, historically, yantras right, have been used um, you know, forever as visual meditation. So one of the things I do actually are these sacred symbol sessions and I have a process that I intuit the sacred symbol for you and just by drawing it on a post-it note or painting it or um, watercolor or Xeroxing it and sticking it around your space, you are stating to the universe, I want this and then the symbol itself is vibrating, emanating an energy that's very powerful that changes the frequency of your physical and energetic space, which is really the same thing, right? Because everything's energy. Everything is energy. Yes. So like a symbol for self-love, this is in my art journal, um, is the sun yantra. So this is a symbol of self-love. Okay. Yeah, so any you know anyone can draw this, right? So you can it's just a sun with kind of these wavy lines, which I love because it's, you know, it's this very, there's a lot of movement and a lot of heat and energy there. And, and it is just boldly saying, I love you and, and just radiating that self-love. So just by drawing this, even, you know, just with a pen or pencil, um, you know, I also have this line, not to be infomercial, but like I have this line of sacred symbol stencils. And so oh, here's good. The I was hoping you were going to share that. Okay, sacred yeah. symbols. Are those stencils? They're just stencils. And just because no one's afraid of stencils, you know, like all in stencil, you know that. So you, you know, you get a sacred symbol stencil. I mean, make it your own. I don't care. But like, you know, connect with the fact that you're the creator and that what you're looking at and what you're creating attracts to you you know, like vibration, right? So it's like law of attraction, but for those of us who, you know, controlling the thoughts in our mind is, is complicated. I mean, it's hard just because, you know, we've got all this unconscious stuff going around. But when you focus on an image, then you're meditating on that and it's integrating on a different level. So this painting here is um, from the Osho Zentero card deck which I have the app on my phone, you know, I get it every morning, and she is called Flowering. And so when you read about her, you all can search it online probably and read. When you read about her, she is just pure love and joy. And, you know, she's sitting on the lotus of enlightenment, and she's got these rainbow bracelets, and she's got the yin and yang hair going on, you know, which I guess I'm kind of getting towards, right? And um, she's just radiating this aura, and I haven't painted it yet because I told you I'm not done but she has seeds coming out of her, you know, out of her dress. And the seeds are her seeds of joy that she's just scattering. She doesn't care if they fall on rock or fertile ground. You know, so she's not attached to the results or how many people get it or not. She's just freely sharing her joy. 
And I was like, yes, that is the energy that I want. And also, I did this because I knew it was going to take some attention to detail for me to finish this painting. And I am a broad brushstroke girl. And, and it would serve me to have more of that attention to detail energy. So I'm very intentionally painting this painting to help kind of bring in that detail-oriented energy. And of course, it's taken me a while to finish her, right? Because I have the detail part, and I avoid the details as much as possible. But um, so what you paint can influence how you are, because everything's energy. It's just like Masuro Emoto, right? So you know the work of Masuro Emoto, where um, thoughts and words and music change the symbols in the water, right? Yes. So we are mostly water. So when you put these sacred symbols and, and attach your, your greatest desires to them, you are changing on a cellular level your energy in your body, in your physical body and your energetic body. So, um, I mean, it is pretty, you can tell I get just slightly excited about this. <laughs> Yes, and you know, you are the embodiment of everything that you're talking about because you're radiating self-love, you're radiating that inner value and, and just juiciness for life and for yourself. And, and so I can just see by looking at you and listening to you talk and how you're showing up in the world that you are embodying that which you are and what you, what you seek can come to you because like you said about the law of attraction, um, likes to attract likes and so what you're doing definitely works very obviously and so I'm so happy that you're sharing it especially with the art form and the audience. I hadn't really considered that because I, I am very creative but not in the way that I've, I've never painted. So yeah. I'm excited about I have to get those stencils and I know that you have a, a lovely free gift to offer our audience so I'm dying to hear about that. <laughs> yes, so okay. So along with um, this whole lovely, yummy, juicy um, subject of sacred symbols, um, some of the most powerful symbols are connected to our chakras and of course mandalas, right? I mean it's like everybody's talking about mandalas lately. So. What I did is I created um, chakra mandalas for you to download, and you know, so they're they're simple, they're beautiful. I created them, and um, and you get to download them. And what they're providing you with is a portal, an opportunity to um, create more energy in those different areas. So of course, if we are radiating self-love, that means our energy is flowing and we are aligned. And so you can, in the same breath, think of your energetic centers in your body and you want them all flowing and you know, vibrating at their highest vibration. So these chakra mandalas are for you to use your creative energy to, to feed and nurture the energy of your chakras. And, and what can happen is, for example, um, you can print them all out. You can you know, print out as many as you want, right? But say you really want to work on your, um, you want to give energy to your heart chakra, right? Which is um, Whitney, can I ask you to tell the, our audience, for those who don't know what a chakra is, just oh. so they can follow along? Sure. Okay. So um, chakras are, are energy centers in your body um, that... Uh, our ancient Indian, you know, tantric, Vedic, Hindu, um, Sanskrit, uh, uh, a map, a, a paradigm for the energy in your body. It's also, if you talk to a chiropractor, you know, which I've always gone to, you know, it corresponds with the parts of your spine where the energy goes out from your spine, you know, the nerves and, and everything that goes out from your spine to feed those organs. Right, so these are energetic centers in your body that any chiropractor or massage therapist or Reiki person or maybe even a Western doctor would attest to that are energy centers in your body. The chakras are the term, the Sanskrit term for these energy centers, and um, they each have to do with a different part of your, um, you know, your your being. So it's the root chakra is about your tribe and a feeling of belonging. And then the crown chakra is where you connect to the divine. And everything else in between is, is a stair-step process, right? So 
in the freebie, in the gift I have for you, it explains the chakras. Great. And okay. each of them has a color, and each of them has a symbol. Everything has symbols. All the ancient wisdom, everything has symbols. So when you, um, for example, print out the heart chakra symbol, so our heart chakra is how we relate to ourselves and to the world, um, and you color it, you can color it green, you can color into it, you know, images, symbols of, of the love that you are attracting. And as you do that, you are getting, creating energy in that heart chakra so that it can be vibrating and moving and flowing as opposed to being blocked. You could also think of the chakras as kind of an inner river of energy. Um, and you want that river open and flowing and aligned, not like, you know, the block. And so, you know, if you've just gone through um, a breakup or something, you know, a friend, you know, you're in a, you know, one of those things that we can get into with friends, misunderstandings, your heart chakra could be really low energy right now because it's feeling blocked, right? You haven't been able to love the way you want. So, so you print out your heart chakra mandala and just spend time meditating on it. And it's not about making a pretty chakra mandala. It's about spending the time and energy focusing on that symbol. And then what you're telling yourself on an energetic and spiritual level is I am welcoming and creating more energy to this part of my being. So I'm very excited for you all to get into that and then share it with me. You know, you can, it's easy to find us all, right? Just show me your, or share with me the stories that you have. Um, and I wanted to say one thing, if I can, because, um, because I feel like it's an important part of the story, is that the last two years for me, I've gotten divorced. I have three kids, 14, 12, and 10 who um, are not with me all the time, who miss me. Um, I'm now, you know, sole supporter financially. You know, I have to make money. You know, I left a 650-acre ranch and a 4,500-square-foot house to rent in town in this little bitty town in Oregon. And I'm happier than I've ever been, but it's also been um, a very intentional thing, right? Because because if I'm not this happy and radiating, the potential to slip into like guilt and worry and you know just like this pain because you know my kids, you know someone might say, oh I miss you or you know it's my son's birthday today, right? And I had to like go over to his friend's house to see him because I it's not my day. So I just want to say like I know that this works because this is what I'm doing for myself and when I get triggered and I am looking at the two opportunities to worry and stress and feel guilty or to tap into the bigger picture of why I'm doing this and that I'm loving myself and honoring myself in the process, that's when I, I bust out my art journal and my painting, I do yoga, I go hiking, you know, I connect with friends, I breathe deeply. It's like I have to do it now more than ever because otherwise I, it would be completely overwhelming. So I just want to say that to reassure any of you that um, that I understand that you know when we say like I don't know if I can do this or this is really hard like there have been so many times where I'm just like maybe I should just you know walk back in and um, keep everyone happy and it's it's a it's a choice so so I uh, this is what's keeping me so excited like this is focusing in on the joy and the love and what brings me joy and love and um, and the rest you know has followed and will continue oh thank you for sharing that story with the audience because you have chosen and like you said it is a choice to instead of stepping into a victim role to self empower through your art form through your self love and through your radiance and choosing that moment to moment by tapping into your creativity is just such a beautiful thing and and just actively working through your tr triggers and actively just being present in your life and using this this system that you have to balance yourself out on a daily basis and so those are wonderful tools that you've offered us today and I am so grateful and thank you for sharing your story um, it's just really beautiful to see you so full of love and full of life and in in the midst of life because life is chaos 
chaotic and it happens uh, day to day. There's always something that's happening and we have a choose whether or not we're going to, like you say, kind of succumb to it or rise above it and see those silver linings and just celebrate what we do have and, and, and just have gratitude for all of that. And so I'm grateful for you and the beautiful gifts that you're sharing because this is a very special and unique talent that you have. And um, I couldn't be happier to have you on the summit today. Thank you, Jackie. And so um, our guests can find your free gift on the email that they got when they uh, signed up for the summit. So uh, check your inbox for that email so that you can get a hold of those um, beautiful um, gifts that she's talking about and work through how to balance out your chakras. And I'm going to be doing that as well. And thank you again so much, Whitney, for being here and being a part of the Make Them Fall Madly in Love Summit. And I look forward to following you online. And, and I want to learn to paint like that. So you've really inspired me. I want to know what my symbol is. So, yes. okay. Well, and happy birthday to your son. Yeah. How old is he? He is eleven. He's eleven. Happy yeah. birthday to him, and I know that um, he's going to have a wonderful birthday because you are a, an amazing mom. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview, and we'll see all of you again on Make Him Fall Madly in Love. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs>